Hi everybody, this is Brittany and Megan from Teach Me ABA. I'm so excited today because we've got Megan in the house. Since she's up north, I hardly ever get to see her, so I'm very excited that for this video, uh, we're gonna be discussing C-7, and this is designing and implementation of sampling procedures together. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's get into it. So sampling procedures are great when you're kind of limited on time and resources and it's just not feasible to take data on every instance of behavior. So essentially what you're doing is that you're going to be breaking down a specific amount of time that you have to observe um, and then you're going to be breaking it down into little segments, let's say. There are three different types of time sampling procedures. Two that use intervals and one where you're just taking data just in one little sliver of a moment, which is great when you're maybe watching a bunch of different kids or uh, you just are too busy to take data consistently. And the good thing is you really want to take care of which one you're going to select because either it's going to overestimate or underestimate. Um, your percentages might be a little bit different than what you're used to because again, this is a segment of time where you're observing this particular behavior. All right, so first let's go ahead and talk about partial interval time sampling, which means that at any point of the interval, if the behavior occurs, it's gonna be marked as occurring within that interval. So again, if you have a five minute interval, it doesn't matter if it happened at 1.30 seconds, it doesn't matter if it happened at two minutes and 30 seconds, the point is that you are going to mark it as occurring. All right, everyone, so what type of behaviors do you guys think that this partial interval recording is best for? And this is really important because Megan brings up a really good question. This is gonna be something that's gonna be on your exam because they want to know that you know when you're supposed to use the time sampling procedure for the right behavior. So Megan, what are our options for everyone so they can answer below in the comments? Uh, so the options are, is this partial interval recording better for short, discrete behaviors that happen super quickly, or is it better to measure behaviors that are long and go a long period of time and are ongoing? So we look forward to your answers because we're gonna be able to give you those answers and we're gonna write them in the comments as well to help you with your studying. Okay, so up next we wanna talk about whole interval time sampling. So Megan, what exactly is whole interval time sampling? So with whole interval time sampling, you've got your chunk of time split into even length intervals, which you also do for partial interval. But this is different because you only record the behavior as occurring if it happens through the entire duration of that interval. So if the interval is 30 seconds, it needs to be going on for the whole time. If it only happens for 28 seconds, it would just be marked a minus. Yeah, and for these particular behaviors, you're looking at maybe if a child needs to sit at their desk while they're in their classroom, right? So you want that child to be sitting for that whole duration because really that's gonna be a skill that they're gonna need in the classroom. And so this is different than the partial interval recording. So another question for you guys and drop your answer in the comments. We'll let you know if you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, is this whole interval recording better for longer duration behaviors or short discrete behaviors? Ooh, we look forward to your answers. So last but certainly not least is going to be momentary time sampling. So for this kind of time sampling, what you're gonna do is that you're going to indicate that the behavior happened right at the end of the interval. So if you're doing a segment of five minutes, you are only going to indicate that that behavior happened right at that five minute mark. So this is super helpful. Like we said earlier, when you're strapped for resources, you can't watch that behavior happen all the time. Maybe you've got a big group. Maybe you're taking data on so many other things that you just can't, it's not a priority to take data on it throughout. So this is super great for those sorts of instances. So like I said, I was so excited to have Megan here today. I've, I've been wanting to do another video with her us together. Um, so if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. We look forward to them. Thanks for watching.